Hey everyone, my name is Daniel Christian, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to change the created by in a power automated approval step. Now, it's really not as easy as it sounds, and if you're kind of confused, I'm talking about the created by. Yes, you can add a requester, and that does help a little, but the created by, now that takes a little bit of work, and that's why I'm making this video for you. So I'll walk you through step by step with an example, but first, here's my intro video. So let me show you an existing approval process that I already have, and it's tied to a SharePoint list. And over here, if a user needs to submit a new manufacturer, it goes through an approval process. So let's actually go and do one demo. Come over here, and I'm gonna add a new manufacturer, and I'm gonna call it Contoso Incorporated. I'll make Finn as the owner of this. Finn goes and submits it, go ahead and click on save. And here's the new manufacturer put in, and currently the status is new. Now that's gonna go ahead and trigger a flow. Now the flow approval process goes to, well, an approver, and that's gonna be Rosanna Christian, and that person will go ahead and get all the approvals, and I'll walk you through that in a minute. So here is the flow. If I go ahead and uh, refresh the all runs, any second now, you will see the new one kicking off. And there you go, it is running, and there's a four second already run over there. So any second now, we should actually hear an approval one. There you go, you heard the ding. So let's go and take a look at that. The approvals actually send an email notification and an approval. Uh, to the owner, which is Rosanna Christian. Um, it get, comes in both ways, and I want to kind of show you that because Teams is an important way to approval, uh, to approve all the approvals. Approve all the approvals, <laughs> that's funny. Um, and here it is. So first I got to go is go ahead and make sure I go to the correct environment, um, and that in this case was the production one, or the Prod USA. So I go and filter that, and there you go. There is the request that has come in. Now when I go and click over here, it's important that you notice that. It says the request, I mean, the, the approval was requested by Daniel Christian. Now remember, it wasn't me who submitted it. It was Finn who went and submitted, but still the request came by me, all right? And this happened in approvals. The other thing is, let's go and see how this looks like from the Outlook standpoint. So I click on the Outlook, and here's another thing, is that requested by Daniel Christian. Remember, Finn went ahead and requested it, okay? So it still came as requested by Daniel Christian. And the reason it did that was because I went ahead and created the flow. So in a situation like this, you would say, oh, well, that's easy, Daniel. Just go ahead and add a request in the flow, and you're good. So what I'll do is I'll leave this as is. We'll go ahead and make the change that we just talked about and see the difference over there, all right? Because that, that is a good way to fix this problem, you know? So I, I want to at least walk you through that. So let's go and edit this flow, and now, we come back to the start and wait for an approval. We click on advanced options, and in the requester, now I'm going to go ahead and create an account called do not reply account. All right, we'll just go ahead and add that. It's a simple account that is already created, um, and I'll kind of quickly show you that. Uh, here it is in my admin center, Office 365 admin center. Uh, I did a quick search by do not reply. Here's my account that I'm going to use. Now this is not a service account. It is just an account that I'm going to use where all the email notifications come via that. And you've seen this in your day-to-day -day work. There is always automated reply or do not reply, and that's what it is. I went ahead and assigned it enough license it's going to use tied to the data source. So in my case, it's SharePoint. So my regular you know, um, 365 account was good enough, which comes with my the business account or the enterprise one. That is good enough for me over here. And so that's the account that I'm using. And now we go back to our uh, requester area. And in the requester, I'm going to go ahead and now search for uh, do not... Let's actually put do not, there you go, IntelliSense went and picked it up. If I type correctly, and that's the one that I'm going to use. I'll go ahead and save it in the requester. It's going ahead and saving. And now let's go ahead and put in another request. So in the other request, I'm going to come in over here and I'll go ahead and add, put in Acme Corp. And this time the owner, you know, can be, let's just go with the normal fin so we can maintain some consistency. Click on save. Oh, there it is. The Acme Corp came in. And any second now, a new flow will kick in. Remember, this is just the first one. We should see another flow that comes in. And there you go. That's the second flow that's come in. So any second now, I should hear a ding because that will come to our approval process over here. Perfect. Heard it. Let's go and take a look. So now let's look at the second approval. Okay. So there should be another one. We're in the correct place. In fact, if I just give it a second, another requested by should come in. There it is. And now that's the Acme Corp. Click on it. 
see the requested by change. So that itself is very powerful if you look at it directly from a team's approval standpoint, okay? And if you're good with this, perfect. This is enough for you. But if you are still using the approval from an Outlook standpoint, then you need to keep listening to what I'm saying. So here is the new one, all right? So click over there. And now see the requested by, requested for was came in by do not reply because that's what we added. But the created by, that still shows you, the one who created the flow. And sometimes that can cause a problem because every single approval request behaves like it came from you. Um, it did not. The approval in this case came from somebody else. And yeah, you can go ahead and add that into the notification or whatnot. But this created by Daniel Christian can cause a lot of confusions. Sometimes it can even cause concerns. Like why is everything coming from Daniel? So you want to go ahead and create that into a you know dedicated do not reply mailbox, which we already have, but make an advanced change on that. So that's what the steps I'm going to show you now moving forward. So let me just go ahead and now do these rejects over here. I have submitted. Same thing on this one. Let me go and reject that just so that you know we have something. That way we can go ahead and take that out. Um, and then these will take care of it by itself. What I'll also do is I'll just go back to my SharePoint list and just clean up that list over there. Come back in. There, there. I'll just delete that so we can go ahead and re uh, recreate that scenario over there. Cool. So now I'm going to walk you through how we're going to go and make this transformation to that do not reply account. Now there's two important, but three important things that need to be done over there. First is, um, like I said, needs the license created, and I went ahead and showed you that. Second is that account, do not reply account, needs access to that data source, whatever data you source you need. It needs that CRUD oper oper operation access over there, the create, read, update, delete. It needs that CRUD operation access level over there. Um, and then finally, here's the important one, the power, um, the account, the do not reply account needs environment maker access as well. Because that account is going to make, make you know, you act, uh, leverage the app over there. It's going to leverage actually the flow over there. It's going to go ahead and you know um, uh, make some not some changes, but it's going to get, uh, uh, work with that environment over there. Uh, so that's the important thing. Whoever is your Power Platform admin or whoever is the system admin of that environment, that person needs to make that account environment maker. In fact, that environment, um, in fact, the do not reply account doesn't even need that system admin of that environment just the environment will be good enough. So kind of those three things that you need to take care of over there. Okay, so now here are the following steps. So this is the original flow that was created. So we've got to do a couple of things. First is for that flow, I'm going to go into the owners, I'm going to click on edit. And over here, I'm going to add another owner. So in the other owner, I'm going to go ahead and type in do not reply. And here is the account. When I click on it, it says, hey, here are the connections used. Are you cool with going ahead and having this new account access to the connections? Go and say, okay, shows up over here. And then now when I go back outside, I see another one accessed over there. This is all neat. In fact, one of the chains you will notice now is on, uh, initially, you prop if you had a flow which was just for yourself, it will show up in the cloud flows. But now that you've shared it, it will be in the shared flows over there. And this is what happened to me. Since I added a second owner, it moved from the cloud flows over to the shared flow. So that's a little tidbit that I'm giving you there. All right, so we're good over there. Next is I'm gonna go ahead and now export this. I export it as a zip package. So let me go ahead and export that. And just remember where you go ahead and export it because it's going to go ahead and save that zip file over there. Um, so what I'll go ahead and say is that this is going to be the change the from in approval step flow. And everything I'm gonna leave that over here, I'll just I'll uh, leave that as create as new and then everything else I'll just put as is. So it's going ahead and exporting. It says creating a package, do not do anything. Yep, went ahead and dropped that. It drops it directly to my default download place. So if I go into my um, downloads, which is right there, there it is. It went ahead and downloaded that right now. Okay, so we got that and it puts a nice timestamp to it. So let's hold on to that. Next, I think I want to do is the original flow that we've got running. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to go ahead and now turn it off. Because when I go and add the new one and I'm starting testing, two of them will go off. So remember to do this, can do it kind of in this order. Also, it's a good idea to do this during your non production hours because you don't want things to constantly flows running around. So you kind of time that during your non production hours, okay? All right. Um, and this alert comes up over there. It says, hey, you went ahead and turned it off. So we're all good. And that's that. Next is we need to now go ahead and log in to this environment using the new do not reply account. So let me just go ahead and move this one over here. And I'm going to now move our do not reply account login. 
And just to validate, I went ahead and came to the same environment. And this is the do not reply account over there. So we are all good. Next, I'm going to come in, make sure everything is the same. And I'm going to click on import. Now, In the import, I go ahead and find that zipped file that we just packaged it and exported that. And I'll go ahead and import it over here. Now this time sometimes can take a little bit of time. Uh, but just go ahead and make sure uh, you know, you follow that process. Sometimes I have to re refresh it. But again, it's just, you know, so I did that, go ahead and upload it, grab that same file that I packaged, uploading it. And now it says uploading your package, don't navigate away. Now, if you have not given the permissions, like I talked about, for example, you didn't give um, that account, uh, or this account, the read write access, the CRUD operation access in the SharePoint list, you get an error in this space. If you did not go ahead and give environment level access to or environment maker access to that account, this is where you'll start getting all these errors over there. Okay, so those two are very important things. Um, everything looks good. Okay, that approval step, since I added create new and I was exporting it, it went ahead and recognized that. And here are the three connectors. So this account is pretty much brand new. So we'll come over here. And it says that you've never actually have an, uh, any of these connections tied to this account. So we got to go ahead and do that as well. So I'll go and click create a new. And in the new, I got to now create a uh, connection um, tied to that account. So that one was uh, for the approval. So that was for the approvals. Come over here to my new connection. I'm going to search for approvals. Here's the approval. It's standard. Click on plus. Create. It's going ahead and adding that connection. Excellent. It's here. Come back in. Refresh the list. Approvals. Save, and we are done with that one. Now let's go and continue with the other one. So the next one is for SharePoint connection. SharePoint connection, don't have anything over here. So I go and click on new. It takes me back to the same place. I can delete the other tab. Over here, I click on new connection. Quickly search for SharePoint. Click on plus. And I'm going to leave it as the top radio button. Click on create. Goes through any operation. Oops, it just says reload. Well, that's interesting. Click on that. It already has access to that SharePoint site. It has you know, the license and everything, so we're good. Come back over here, refresh the list, select that, and we are moving along. Now the last one is for the Office 365 Outlook connection. Now this is why you got to make sure that you have um, the uh, all the license requirement um, generated for that account. You cannot do this without unlicensed account. You need to have a licensed account because then that would be a step you would start getting. Um, errors over there. Okay, same thing here. Connect, I mean, create a new one. Um, it may or may not require an auth. In this case, it does. So I'll just go ahead and click on that. And it didn't really require me to put in a username and password because I've already done that once. And we've got these three coming over here. I'll refresh that there, save. And we are good. Looks like everything is good. So now I'm going to click on import. And so far, we've taken care of everything. Gave it those, again, three things. Cannot emphasize enough on that. License access to the data source and environment maker. We've taken care of all those three things and therefore I haven't received any errors over there. The errors really did not make any sense to me and therefore I just kind of, you know, worked it through my, um, uh, you know, uh, just reverse engineering and figure, okay, what are the important things that I need? And I'm going to assign those three important things. It all just worked over there. All right, so we are all good and it gave me a good thumbs up. Like all package resources was, uh, all package resources were successfully imported. So now when I go into my flows, it actually went ahead and imported that successfully and it goes ahead and keeps it turned off. So that's good. Now, just from my own curiosity, I will go ahead and make sure that when I logged in as myself, the change approver is turned off. Perfect, that upload. So now I can come in over here and I can go ahead and turn it on. Loading. All right. It says there's a potential problem with this flow. That problem is because it is um, turned off. Click on turn on. And then when I look at it, so there's a problem with this flow's trigger. All right. So what I've noticed in this case is I go ahead and edit. And in the edit, it will just kind of work its way around. It just needs to kind of one time edit it, go ahead and take a look at anything. See, because the moment I, I, I opened it up, I didn't get any other errors over here. So I just opened it, saved it. You know, just kind of give it a little um, confirmation that, yep, everything looks good. And then now when I come in over here, I don't get any errors. Looks like good, but there's only one way to confirm that is run the flow. So that's now when we go back into our SharePoint list. 
So when I come in over here, now again, right now I can log, I mean, run, uh, put an entry as any user, right? And I'm just going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to come in and in the flow, uh, I'll go ahead and actually do, well, I'm going to, I intentionally didn't change something. If you haven't figured it out, I'll, I'll show you in a minute. So I'm going to say Contoso Incorp. Um, this time, let's just do Fin again. And I save it. New item came in. The default was new. Um, we go back in as our new account, oh, which is here. Yep, do not reply. Give it a few seconds. First time a flow is running, so it takes a while. There you go. Went ahead and kicked off. And I already heard a ding, which is good. So let's go back in and take a look at what's going on. So the flow itself did not change because the flow was going to the same person in this case, uh, goes to Rosanna and then uh, who has to go ahead and approve it. So any second now we should go ahead and see that applying over here. And it did. So it said that the request was came in. Let me just make sure I come in. These were the old ones. So I'm going to just close that off. There you go. So that one came in. It came in uh, just now, and that is the new one. Now, again, from the flow side, it is um, sending it, I guess, by the requested by. So on the flow end and directly in Teams, you don't really notice that big change that you made. But let's go and take a look at from the Outlook side. All right. So from the Outlook side, I click over here, and you see that now the requested by came from do not reply. It did not come from the person who created the email and it, it directly works over here. So that was kind of the new change over there. Now, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is in the flow, I think before we exported that, we did not make the, the change to uh, the flow itself. So let's go and talk about a, a setting in the flow. Oh, I'm still in the same user. Right, so I come in here, I'm gonna go and go back in the flow, I click on edit, and in the edit, I just wanna validate, did I remove that change? And I did not. So let's test that because the requester was still there. So for those of you who are very eager to find out, hey, did Daniel make a full change and this is good? I will go ahead and now remove that requester um, and then run another test. So here's there. Went and saved it. We'll keep the first one running so we've got a good comparison. Let's go ahead and now add another entry. So the next one was, what was it? Acme. Acme Corp. And I'll, I'll, I'll be the entry one this time. Go ahead and save it. So the new entry came in, Acme, and this one submitted by me. And let's go back in as the new user. We'll see another flow show up over here. And there you go. There's the flow. Go ahead and, you know, if you want to click on it, you can see that it's just pending in the uh, approval step over there. But we got to wait for the ding. Ah, there's the ding. And in the ding, we'll be able to actually come and take a look at the email directly. And here's the new email. And over there, we just validated that, yep, even though we removed that requester, the requested by still comes in correctly. It, see, it just does not go ahead and make any change. It comes in correctly over there. It is exactly the created by, which is what made that change over there. So as a quick recap, we were now able to successfully change the created by for that approval step in the flow. And to do that, yes, we had to put in a lot of work, but it's worth it, especially for scenarios where you want to actually change that email account over there. And again, the three important things was the license, access to the database, and then the do not reply or that account that you use needs to have that environment maker over there. And we went through both these examples of how we before and then how we were able to do after and then the account changes over there. And remember that the created by is different than the requester, because requester you can go ahead and add it you know, directly into that uh, approval action. And yes, it does help from the team side, but when you go and take a look at it from the Outlook, it still shows that created by over there, even though you've added a new requester. So hopefully this video was helpful, and as always, keep power automating. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube video. Remember, this is all free with fresh content that is updated on a weekly basis. So if you've already subscribed to my channel, thank you and spread the word. If you haven't already, subscribe, click on the bell notification and let the learning begin.